funny here, um, you know, the rainy season is, is almost over, and it rained really, it rained a lot uh, yesterday and the day before, and then today it was just miserably hot. You know, just really, really hot today, but that's okay. Yeah. Today was still a good day. I finally got my car back, okay. so I was glad. You know, my, my car, somebody smashed okay. into it. Yeah, you know, and it fin I finally got it back, so not bad. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, somebody smashed into it about three weeks ago. Uh, it was parked, you know, parked in my driveway. Somebody was drunk. They drove off the road and just plowed into it, smashed the whole back end, did a lot of damage, um, you know, but now it's finally back, so it's good. Wow. I have wheels again. So. It's so sad. So sorry. Oh no, but it. But no, no, no. It's okay. It's only. It's only a car, and, and everybody's okay. Yes. So. Thanks yeah. God, everybody is okay, and you are yeah. so well being, still here. Yeah. 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 So let's see who else we have here. Zach. Hello, Zach. Yeah. Hello, Rosa. Yes. How are hey. you? Hey. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Where are you from, Zach? I'm from Guinea, West Africa. Okay, good. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, I'm living in Malaysia. Oh, really? Where in Malaysia? Yeah, I'm living in Kuala Lumpur. And now <laughs> yeah. it's running here. Right now it's running. But yep. a little bit is not so uh, that heavy. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, you... I'm just sitting in my room and looking through the, through the window. Yep. And the weather yeah. is very nice. Yeah, you, you probably got my rain from yesterday. I'm in the Philippines right now, and yeah, I've, uh, I've nice. actually, yeah, yeah, I've, I've actually spent a fair amount of time in KL, more time yeah. going Penang and also Ipo. So, so wow, you so you, you you look quite. Uh, I mean, uh, a lot of things about Malaysia. Yeah, but especially the food, the Penang food. You can't beat that. <laughs> yeah, Penang food. So, <laughs> Chinese, Chinese food. Yeah, well, also, also too the, the different mixes of curries and everything. But but anyway, um, we won't talk about food the whole time, or I'll just get hungry. So, but nice yeah. to meet you, Zach. Nice to meet you, Thank you. Igor. Nice you. Thank you. Yes, hi. How are you? Hey, doing well. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Good, good, good. Okay, well, there's there's no sense in uh, playing around. Let's just get started with class here, okay? So we're going to learn about Procter and Gamble. Um, that's the lesson today. Uh, you know, I should have I should have brought this up. Let me see if I can see um, major. So does anybody know about um, Procter and Gamble? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what what do you know about them? It's a multinational international company. Produce mm -hmm. uh, FMGC, uh, fast moving. Uh, uh, I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't know either. I don't know either. But um, did you? Have you folks ever seen this? This is this is just shocking. This is absolutely uh -huh. shocking. So um, you know, we like to say in the U.S. Here, I'll share this with you. We like to think in the United States that you know it's a capitalist type of country and there's so many companies that can make it and, you know all this other stuff but we don't realize that actually most of this is just ran by a few big companies you know with P and with P and G being the major one I mean look at this I, I don't know um, the reach that Procter and Gamble has in your country um, also Nestle I think Nestle is the largest food company in the world okay but what I'm, what I'm trying to say here, what I'm trying to express, is that we think that there's so many of these like smaller companies, right? And we don't realize that all it is is just branding by these large companies. There's just a few companies that control all of this. So, you know, but, I think uh, what you meant. I did know. You, you, yeah, you did know about this. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't think a lot of people realize this. I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't realize this until maybe like. You know, two years ago or something like that, when somebody showed me this graph or, or whenever, but um, that's it's pretty amazing, you know. It's just a few big companies that control everything, 
Uh, that's, these are the major ones. But this is what we're going to be talking about today, Procter & Gamble. All right, and this is a lesson that um, you know that they have us um, that they chose for us to uh, to use here. So let's see, uh, Marzi, hello, Marzi. Okay, Lamia, nice to see you here, Lamia. Hi, teacher. How are you? I'm doing very well. How have you been? Well, thanks. You've been doing well? Okay, good, good, good. And let's see, Mars, I thought Marzi's been in my classes before. Hello, Marzi. Hi. Hi, how are you, Marzi? I'm yeah, fine, thank Hi. you. How are you today? Doing well, doing well. Somebody has a little bit of uh, some, a little bit of static coming from you, but nothing bad. If you want to just check there, I think it might be um, Lamia, but who knows. Okay, so good. Well, welcome to class. Uh, the lesson that we have today, it's a reading and vocabulary over a company called Procter & Gamble, P&G, okay? All right, and I was just showing here how, you know, there's only a few major food groups that actually control everything, and basically underneath these food groups, uh, this is where you have, underneath these large companies, you just have these different brands, you know, just smaller companies, right? They're all owned by the same brand. It's like yeah. uh, pockets, pockets. Like what? Uh, pockets. Uh, pockets, P O C K E T S. Yes, or? yes, yes. Um, uh, oh, is that way? Is that way you describe? Um, you know, subsidiaries. We call them subsidiaries. Sorry. We call them subsidiaries. You know, of the larger company. So a subsidiary. That's how we refer to it, you know. Once. Yeah, so you have a, um, okay, so you have smaller, you have smaller or daughter companies, okay? But uh, I understand that this are no smaller company. This is um, like products, like brands. This is not a smaller company. So they just brand all of these? Um, Okay, so then all they are just brands. So pockets is how you refer to them. Uh, yes, it's um, uh, uh, like company have uh, many pockets and uh, they sell uh, these uh, products. Oh. Uh, and you don't know about this that they are at the same company. For oh, example, packaging, packaging. Yeah, so packaging. I get what you're saying. So packaging mm. is what you're talking about. Yes. Um, you said. What packaging? What packaging? Mm -hmm. Well, just different types of packaging, right? Okay, packaging and labeling, right? Okay, so these companies, ah. they um, like Procter and Gamble. You can see they make Dawn Tide Bounce, right? And they're just different, um, different uh, packaging that they put in here, owned no, by but the same the, company. In the in the marketing and sales exists uh, the term like pocket, uh, uh, like a company have uh, packets. It's informal to say this, and uh, they bring customers with these uh, small brands, and customers uh, usually uh, they don't know that uh, one company have uh, has these uh, all brands. Hmm. For example, okay. Mars and Sneakers. Uh, for for uh, custom for customer uh, maybe he don't know that Mars and Snickers is the same product. Okay, so like co-branding or relabeling, like Marzi says, co-branding. So like for instance, what we have one that I know of is where you have Hellman's and you have real mayonnaise. Okay. Those are actually the same, same exact product. But what they do is they just change the name based on the region. Okay, like real mayonnaise is better known in the southern part of the United States, and Hellman's is known in the northern part of the United States. Right. Mm -hmm. So you have Hellman's, and then you have um, you have the other brand in here. Okay, so all right. Well, let's um let's get started here then. Yeah, I just I just didn't know that term. 
All right, so um, what we're going to do here is go through the vocabulary, and then we go through some reading here. Uh, make sure that when we go through the vocabulary, use it as the type that it is, if it's a noun, verb, adjective, adverb, or preposition. Okay, so let's start left to right here. Cecilia, commodity. Commodity. Product. Uh, can you hear me, uh, Cecilia? Feel Hello, Ce yeah, Cecilia. <laughs> Hello, Cecilia. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, commodity. It's okay, Cecilia. Do um, you want to read off here? Okay. All right. And by the way, Lamia, I know. I know you don't realize this. No, no. Yeah, yeah, Cecilia. But wait one second. Um, Lamy, I think there's a little bit of like a uh, sound coming from you. I mute you. And it's just a small amount of sound, but I, I think it'll. Uh, yeah, one second here. Okay, so yeah, I just muted you again. There's a little bit of a noise. Just check your microphone or or your system, Lamia, and see if you can see what it is. Okay, uh, Cecilia, go ahead. Commodity. Can you read this here? Can uh can you hear me well, Fendi? Yes, it's clear okay. and good enough. Mm. Cecilia, are you having a hard time hearing me? <laughs> yeah, I think she is. Fendi, can you read a commodity here? Can you tell me about a commodity? Okay. Commodity. Um, an article of need for commerce and Mm -hmm. So Cecilia, look in the chat. Yeah, I, th I think there's a delay. No, I can't. It's okay. Hmm. Um. You know what? Try. See how many people are. One, two, three, four, five. Seven. Ah, she leaves. She might not get back. Um, so Cecilia, we'll we'll skip you. We'll go to Fendi right now. Maybe try to fix your connection speed, or check your um, or maybe maybe uh, for now kill your camera. Stop your camera because there's a delay, Cecilia. Okay. So Fendi, commodity. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Commodity. Mm -hmm. An article of trade or commerce, especially a product, is distinguished from a service. Okay. To yep. something, so, okay. So that, that, that's yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay. So that's a um, that's a commodity. Like you have food commodities, oil commodities, different things like that. Okay. Okay. Let's go on to the next one here. Um, Igor, corporation. It's a association, uh, a group of people that uh, create a company. Is a comp is a corporation a, a person? No, group of people. Are you sure about that? Corporation? Uh huh. Yes. Okay. Well, in the an United States, uh, an association no, no, of individuals. Yeah, yeah. So, um, actually, okay, this is crazy. In the United States, okay, we can we consider those as a person. <laughs> but but uh, at no, another I, lesson, I learned about a group of people. All lesson was about corporations. No, you're you're right. You're right. Um, but actually, despite despite not being actual human beings or natural people. As far as the law in the United States is concerned, they're legal people. 
Isn't that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, uh, yeah. It's 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 insane. It's it's yeah. just crazy. You know the U.S. stock Got market. Yeah, the U.S. stock market's up to like fourteen thousand three hundred or something like that. Highest it's been in five years, and yet we have a, a lot of unemployment. But anyway, but yeah, and Igor, I, I wasn't I wasn't trying to make fun of you. I wasn't trying to mock you or anything like that. Um, pardon me. I was just. It's really crazy how we believe that in the United States. Uh, but you know? can you answer on this question? Why in the United States, uh, for example, uh, uh, small companies um, they named cor corporation. For example, if I create um, my company, I, I can name Igor Corporation. Why? Um, well, you can name it whatever you want. So that's just whatever your name is. Um, you know. So you can name it whatever you want, um, but as far as uh, yeah, so I mean you can you can name it whatever you want. You can call it um, Johnny's Company, right? And Johnny's Corporation. Mm -hmm. All I'm expressing is the fact that we in the United States, for whatever crazy reason, uh, we consider uh, corporations to be legal people, and they have the many yeah. many of the same rights and responsibilities. But, and because because yeah, of that, mm -hmm, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say that it's not just the United States. I think all over the world now they, they have two kind of person, legal person or legal people and the natural people. Even in Saudi Arabia and my country, Malaysia, in the legal system, they have two kind of, I mean, uh, people, legal people. Like, we are following United States, I think. <laughs> it's not just you. Okay, yep. Everybody else is as crazy as us. So, <laughs> it's good. <laughs> well, no, but it's what it's done. It's caused a lot of problems, you know, with the way that the way that companies run things and lawsuits and so forth. You know, they're just not held as accountable as they should be. It's, it's kind of crazy. But anyway, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't mean to get off on a tangent. I just thought that's a uh, effect. And Zach, thank you very much for sharing that. I didn't realize that um, everybody else was uh, doing the same dumb thing. So. Um, <laughs> Kumar, uh, these are Kumar, uh, Pisas. I'm, I'm probably saying your name improperly. Yeah, hi, teacher. Yeah, hi. My, my name is Piyush. Piyush? Okay, Piyush. Yeah. Welcome to class. Where are you from, Piyush? Yeah, I am from India. Okay, good, good, good. Welcome to class. Hey, Piyush, yeah, can you, you use the word, you're welcome, can you use the word corporation in a sentence, please? Mm. Uh, corporation. Yeah, can you use that in a sentence? What a corporation is is a group of uh, individuals that then form a legal entity in order to run a business. Mm, sorry. sorry, sorry, DJ. It's okay. No problem. No problem. Uh, is this your first class in Colingo? Yeah. Okay, well, welcome to class. Good, good to have you here. Okay, yeah. so let's yeah, see. Thank you. You're welcome, Fendi. Can you use corporation in a sentence? Mm, okay. PNG Corporation is the big company in the world. Uh, you want to say is one of the largest companies in the world? Y yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, okay, okay. No problem. No problem. Or one of the biggest companies in the world. Okay, good, good, yes, good. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, Lamia, document, document. Remember, this is a noun, so it's not to document or record something. Yes. Okay. And Lamia, do you have do you have an extra? Um, it sounds a little ex little echo. Do you have an extra Colingo window open? Uh, teacher, okay. yes. uh, can you hear me well? Yeah, I can hear you. There's a little bit of a sound that comes from you. I can hear you well, yes, but it sounds uh, like... Problem in the okay, no problem. I just figured I'd let you know. Some teachers kind of just don't care. They just let stuff go. I just like to make sure that it's, it's fixed. But anyway, no problem, Mamia. Can you tell me the definition of document and used in a noun? Yes, uh, I know the meaning of the document. But so mm -hmm. I don't know uh, how to use it in the sentence. Okay. That's okay. Can you give me the definition of document used as a noun? Uh, 
for example, um, um, <coughs> business uh, bus businessmen um, uh, often use uh, the document of the company. <laughs> so a document is a um, is a form of communication, right? Like a written form of communication used in either legal manners. Or just uh, you know simple communication, explanation of different things and so forth, right? Okay, good. Mommy, I'm gonna I'm gonna mute you. There's if you can get that fixed, it would be good. Okay, we can hear you. There's a little bit of sound, and I, I know, Mommy, I know it's frustrating. Okay, so um, but just take a look at that. Okay, all right. But you know, you're always welcome in my classes. Okay. Okay, so um, Rata. Rata Sukma? Yes. Hi, Rata. Is it Rata? Rati. Rati, okay, Rati. Where are you from, Rati? I'm from Indonesia. Okay, good. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, Rati, can you use document in a sentence as a noun? Okay, I can, I can see it clearly. It's something like. Hmm. Okay. All right. So, um, document the word document here. Let me. Okay. Yeah. Can you use document? Yes. So, all right. So, a written yeah. or printed piece of paper. Yeah. Can you can you can you use that in a sentence? Can you give me an example sentence? Something like. He handed me the document to sign. Can you give an example sentence like that? Okay. I have a document to send to my friends. I have a document. What's that? To send to my friend. Okay, I have a document to send to my friend. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, <coughs> so. Justification, all right. So justification, uh, Marzia. It, it is Marzia, right? Yes, it is right. Okay, good. Okay, all right, Marzia. Justification, and it's a noun. It's a noun mm. here. Does it mean to give reason for something, uh, reasoning, or explaining? Absolutely. Um. Yep. So it's a reason or explanation for uh, for an action or for for something that happened. Yep. Good. Very good. Igor, can you use justification in a sentence, please? Um, I want. I want uh, justification. One second. Mm -hmm. He justify uh, the fact. Yeah, so he justified the fact. Now that's that's in a verb form, okay? Because that's an action, okay? All right. So justification. So that's the reason. So so Igor, if somebody did something wrong to you, all right, and you wanted to know why, can you use justification in a sentence? I asked uh, justification from him. I asked for his justification for his actions would be good, okay? Okay. All right? You can just kind of replace that with reason. There's no justification to leave Colingo class. Very good, Fendi. Okay? All right? So, let's see here. Let's go down a little bit further so we can do some reading later. Resolve. Resolve. Let's see here. So, um, uh, uh, push. Uh, Push, right? Push. Can you uh, can you tell me the definition of resolve? Uh, yeah, resolve means uh, solve the matter. Uh, resolve. I, yeah. I, so it's so also to remember it's in a uh, it's in a noun form. Okay. It's okay. in a noun form, right? And again, folks, don't don't be uh, don't be worried. Okay, I know I know some of you are like, what's going on here? You know. So. Um, <clears throat> So in here, what the heck? Yeah. So, so this is an advanced class, so it might be a little more difficult for you. 
All right, and we're oh, asking for yeah. specific forms. Okay, so resolve. Okay. All right, you can see you can see resolve here. And by the way, you're uh, you're having a lot of sound as well. There's a lot of stuff going on. I gave you a link. Okay, but you can see resolve. Okay, that's a um, okay. termination resolution. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's how we okay. use that. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm gonna mute you just because there's a fair amount of noise coming from you. Wow. My ears, my dear ears. Oh no. Okay. So we'll get to some verbs here. Okay. So um, rati, rati, yes. access, okay. access is a verb. Mm. I have to make uh, sentences. Uh, tell, tell me what the definition is first. Uh, okay. Access is um, it's, uh, like a uh, way. Like a way? Okay. Yes. Uh, mm. Something you can press with, press by. Um, yeah, it's, it's more like in here, okay? All right? It's like to, mm. to gain something, right? Or to... to to um, get into something or to gain into something, right? Gain access here, for example. Okay? It's so like to access something, to access some information. You could use that. Okay? Uh, let's see. Cecilia, can you hear me well? Boy, the Google gods hate me today. Yes, I can. Okay, okay good. Yes, access as a verb in a sentence, please. Hello. Hello. Yeah, it's delayed still, Cecilia. Don't uh, worry, it's one of these classes. Go ahead. Uh, they, yes. They access, they access uh, to the information in the computer. Okay, you can just say they... I, I think you're using articles that you don't need to, or pardon me, uh, prepositions. Um, so yeah, you just want to say they accessed the information in the computer. And Fendi says I can access the okay. internet uh, from my home. And Fendi, what you can say is I can access the internet easily from my home. Okay. All right. So you what you want to do is you want to say easily. Okay. All right. In here, okay. Um, uh, let me see. I want to make. Sure. Yeah, I'll just use implement. What the heck? Okay. So Zach, implement yes. as a verb. Okay. Im implement is, uh, I think, to put something in practice in in, mm -hmm. in the practice. You have to yes. put something in a practice or to, to put something to, together. To right? initiate. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, good, good, good. All right. Very good. So implement, right? Carry out, put into action. Okay, and let's see here. Lamia, can you use implement in a sentence, please? Oh, okay. Uh, but uh, I can understand uh, exactly. This meaning. It's okay. No problem. Um, so I'll, let me give you an example sentence. Maybe that'll help. Uh, we are going to implement the new process this week. All right? Uh, okay. mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, um, it means to. Uh, well, it means like to put into practice, you know? Like you see here, like you hear with this definition, right? To carry out, fulfill, you know, put into practice, right? Okay. You know, like they say, the computers they put an implementation. That's a noun. Okay, they implement something. Yeah, put an implementation. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, um, like telephone. Yes, is used. Um, uh, in other life. Um, yeah, but you don't really implement a telephone, okay? And if implement like like it shows in here, okay? All right, it's like to carry out, fulfill, 
okay? So like you implement a new process, you implement a new program, you implement a new software package, for instance, okay? Things, things like that. Okay, no, no problem. Again, this is, uh, this is an advanced class, so it's a little bit harder, okay? So I'm going I'm to mute you, okay? Let me mute you in here, okay? So, okay, so here's a phrasal verb in here. Phase, phase out, okay? So phase out. Um, let's see here. So I think there's still Cecilia, but and uh, wow, folks, can you can you guys mute yourself when you're not speaking? I don't know where all the sounds coming from. Okay, but um, just when you're not speaking, mute yourself just so we don't have all the sounds. See much better. Cecilia, can you hear me, or is it still a delay? I think it's a delay. I can hear you perfectly well. Oh, okay, good, good, good. Can you tell me the phrasal verb phase out? I think it means like uh, gradually uh, disappears or uh, vanishes. Like yeah, so gradually get rid of something, gradually yes. stop using something, okay? So yes, good, yes. good, good. Uh, Marzi, can you use phase out in a sentence? Mm, uh, yes, of course. The, for example, the floppy disk has been phased out for the last five, ten years. Okay, good, good, good. What's a, what's a floppy disk? Um, the... No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't remember what a floppy disk is. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Those are, it was crazy. You used to have to stick like ten floppy disks in in order to yeah. install a program. Make sure you put it in right. Maybe when it reads. Right. Gosh, yes. what we had to go through. Now you just download applications to your phone. Wow, what a world we live in, huh? Okay. Yeah. But we're still there's still extreme poverty. Too bad. Um, okay. So undertake, Fendi, undertake. What does that mean? Hello, undertook, undertake. Uh huh. Undertake. Yeah. Undertake. That mean like. Uh, uh, to begin some things, or oneself to begin in the new things. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. To, so to take on a task, right? Okay. Yes, yes. Right. Okay, so to agree with, mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, and let's see some of the sentences. Yeah. So, so Fendi, um, you're probably still you're, you probably want to say I'm phasing out my bad habits this year. Okay. Unless you only, pacing. unless you only, pacing. I'm yeah, pacing. I'm pacing. yeah, I would say I'm phasing out my bad habits this year. Are you? Do you okay. only have one bad habit? Are you the type of person <laughs> only has one? Boy, you're lucky. You're lucky, you know. Okay, yeah. so that's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's good. Yep. And uh, very good, Igor. Procter and Gamble implemented um, new technology uh, uh, in their factories. So, yep, in their factories. Okay. Um, we're going to implement a new telephone system next month. Yep, Cecilia. Okay. So I see Cecilia. I understand what you talk about now with, with telephone and implement. I get that. Okay. Okay. So here we are. So um, let's see. Igor, annual. Annual. Annual? Mm -hmm. It's... Um... It has an adjective, year, right? Year. Yeah, occurring once a year, right? Yes. Okay. All right, good. So you have like an annual review. Um, uh, push, push, uh, annual. Can you use annual in a sentence, please? Uh, push, you might, you might be muted. There's a red microphone above your Colingo logo. Look in that red microphone. Hello. Yeah, hi, Hello. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you, can you yeah. use annual in a sentence, please? Uh, sorry. It's okay. No need to apologize. So, I'll help you, okay? Do you work? Okay. Do you work right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a job, okay? 
Do you, yeah. do you have a review every year? Does your company have a review once a year where they look over things in the company? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so that's, yes, your yes, annual, yes. that's your annual review. Use that in a sentence, okay? Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, can you can you give me an example sentence? Big push. By, uh, by we, the way, we have yeah, good. Go ahead. Yeah, we have to submit an annual report to my manager. Mm -hmm. Yep, we have to submit an annual report to my manager. Okay, so good. And you probably want to say we have to submit an annual report to our manager. Okay, all right. You'd say, I need to submit an annual report to my manager. Uh, we need to su submit an annual report to our manager. It just flows better, okay? All right, so let's see here. Um, innovative, innovative, all right? So, uh, Rati, innovative, can you tell me the definition of innovative? And you might be muted, Rati. Hey, Rati, there's a red Hi. microphone above the coding. Yep, go ahead. What's the definition of innovative? Innovative. Uh, innovative. Mm -hmm. is, um, uh, I can't explain. I can't understand, but I don't know how to explain it. That's so, okay. Yeah, it's okay. And um, you know, the definition here doesn't help out too much. It's to be creative. It's to be able to create new things. All right, mm -hmm. that others don't create. That's when you're innovative. Okay. No. So good. Okay. Thank good. you. Oh, you're so welcome. Okay. So, approximately, approximately, um, Zach, what does approximately mean? <clears throat> approximately, uh, it can be something, I mean, uh, probably or roughly. Yeah, so roughly near, near approaching, right? Okay. Yeah, roughly. So, so approximately. Uh, is there any difference between, I mean, something is probably to, have, to be happen and something is approximately going to happen? So something is probably going to happen? Or something is um, approximately going to happen. Maybe. Is it? Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's slightly different. So, you know, probably there's like a a, a chance, right? You're saying that there's a chance that this is going to happen, but when you say approximately, um, you know, uh, that one there. Uh, it's kind of hard to ex explain the difference. Um, it's like when, right when you're near something, okay? So probably means that it might. There's a probability it might happen. Approximately is just about a certain state, okay, that you have. Let's just look at the difference. Okay. Are you talking about probability? Yeah, probability. So probability. Um, yeah, so this again, so this is just a chance that it's going to happen. That's the main thing that you're looking at, okay? All right? As opposed to approximately okay. where you're describing something that's that's near uh, its accuracy, okay? So do you understand that the thing you want to think of is chance? Okay, or okay? All right, this is good. Good, good question, though, okay? So, by the way, folks... Please, uh, so Rati, please mute yourself when you're not speaking just because there's a good amount of noise um, that comes from you, okay? And uh, Cecilia, despite, what's despite? Despite, uh, in spite of, would it be? I'm so not despite. defining it. I'm not defining it. I'm That's okay. If it's a, yeah. if it's a scene yeah. anymore. Um, despite no, you got um, it. Um, yeah, so in, in spite, in spite of, of no mm -hmm. withstanding con yeah. content yeah. Uh, treatment. Yeah. So um, 
you know, some people will replace that with uh, with the expression, even though, right? Even though it's clear. Yeah. yeah. Even even though, even though, um, even though there was a uh, asteroid that flew over Russia last week, nobody died, right? Nobody died due to it. I think people yeah. still died last week. I think that's pretty natural. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, yeah, so let's let's start reading this. Uh, Fendi, can you start to read this here, William Proctor? Okay. Uh, can you make a bigger, a little bigger? Yeah, you know what? Unfortunately, this is this is as large as it goes. Let me, let me just double check and see what I can do here. Yeah, it's just. Uh, yeah, it's really, it's honestly as big as it can go. Okay, okay, no problem. I can zoom my screen as well. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, William Protex owned a candle making business. James Gamble owned a soap business. When, two, when the two young business owners married sisters, their father-in-law convinced them of a scheme to link their business together to form a partnership. His justification was that a partnership would have a much better chance of surviving the negative business environment that small business were experiencing in the United States during the 1930s. In fact, the United States was undergoing a financial crisis. Banks were closing and there were deep concerns for the economy throughout the country. Despite these problems and with the resolve of young professionals, they formed a partnership in 1837 and registered it, is, it as Protex and Gambles, RPNG. Then they undertook to compete to compete with 14 other soap and candle makers in Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincinnati, Ohio. Yep. Cincinnati, yep. Ohio. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Cincinnati, Ohio. That's one of the. Cincinnati. Uh, okay. Cincinnati. Yep. Okay. Yep. Now Cincinnati is one of the armpits of the United States. Uh, Igor, go ahead. Read, read the next one, please. By 1859, their partnership was one of the largest companies in Cincinnati, with annual sales of $1 million and 80 employees. During the Civil War, the volume of their business continued to grow because Procter & Gamble won government contracts to supply soap and candles to the military. Subsequently, how to pronounce this word? Uh, subsequently. Mm -hmm. Subsequently, soldiers took their Procter & Gamble products home to their families when the war ended in 1865, which contributed to building uh, of brand recognition. Then, in uh, 1879, Procter & Gamble introduced ivory, the floating soap, by 1890, uh, Procter & Gamble had grown into a multi-million dollar domestic corporation, selling more than 30 different commodities. V with the in invention of the electric light bulb, how to pronounce this word? Yeah, light bulb. Mm -hmm. Light bulb. Candles were paced out in the 1920s. But Procter & Gamble's research laboratory was coordinating the production of one series of innovative products after another. Then, in the 1930s, Procter & Gamble used uh, radio advertising to access listeners of radio, soap operas, and to maximi maximize, maximize. Mm -hmm. maximize its promotion of consumer products. Okay, yep, one, one second here, let me see something here. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, let's see here. Uh, Lamia. Yes. Can you read here today, Procter & Gamble? 
Oh, yes, today? Okay. Today, yep. Procter & Gamble is global corporation that manufactures and markets more than uh, uh, 3,000 uh, brands of consumer goods with operation is more in more than 70 countries. Worldwide sales of, uh, to over 5 mil billion customers totalate approximately um, uh, 38.1 uh, one billion for 1899, uh, according to published financial documents. It is still demo uh, demonstrate its success in imposing uh, a pre presence of at least one of uh, Procter and Gamble product in every uh, home in America. Open your kitchen cab uh, cabinets, maybe you will find Crisco um, or Folgers, Folgers coffee. Go into your la laundry, uh, laundry, laundry, it's okay, okay, laundry room. room. Mm -hmm. uh, there, uh, there you may see the tide or bonds. Okay, good, uh, good. Sorry, teacher. What's the meaning uh, maximize? Maximize, yeah. So um, it's like to to make the most out of something. All right. So in here, they're trying to maximize their profits. So they're trying to get the most out of everything they have and make the largest amount of product. Um, uh, sorry, I mean profits. Okay. All right. So to make the most, maximize. Okay. Just like you can. You can tell somebody, uh, like Fenny can ask me, could you, could you maximize the screen, all right? And what that would mean is to make it as big as I can, all right? So 300 brands, just to help you, this is 300, okay? All right? Okay, so let's see in here. You're welcome. Um, yeah, just, just finish reading here. Okay, how about Crest Toothpaste? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, how about how, how about Chris uh, who's past or charming in your bedroom? It was also Procter and Gamble that introduced Pampers. Pampers, the uh, disposable uh, diaper, not bad for a partnership scheme, implemented implemented uh, by two young men at a time uh, national economic uncertain uncertain. Uncertainty. 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 Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Igor. Again, I apologize. I didn't. I didn't realize. I thought for some reason you're absolutely right. I thought for some reason that these were subsidiaries, but obviously um, I was wrong. Okay. So also the, to mm -hmm. um, in the um, marketing, uh, I don't know if you are familiar with these terms. Exists um, a term like pockets. Company have pockets. And uh, uh, if they want to bring um, many customers, they can create, uh, for example, free packets. And uh, it's an independent packets, independent brands. Mm -hmm. OK, yep, got it, got it. Yeah, I, I just I hadn't heard of, um, of packets before. Yep. So not, not everybody got to read, or not everybody's able to read. Um, so I want to make sure we can continue on here so everybody gets to read. This is pretty. This is pretty crazy here. Okay, so um, some people think that Procter and Gamble that their their um, symbol is a sign of the devil. They've recently changed it. Uh, just so everybody can read, uh, Marzi, can you can you read this for me, please? Here's the proof. Mm, here is a proof that you can't stop an urban legend, not even in a court of law. In 1997, Procter and Gamble filed the most recent. Uh, filed uh, the most recent in a series of lawsuits against uh, Amway Corporation and several several of its uh, distributors for allegedly spreading rumors to the uh, to the effect that uh, PNG uh, maker of familiar household products such as Mr. Clean and Tight Laundry Detergent is affili affili um, affiliated, affiliated. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, affiliated with the Church of uh, Satan. In evidence, uh, PNG lawyers submitted the transcript of the vo of a voicemail message in which an Amway distributor could be heard rely uh, relying what they characterized as false and malicious statements about Procter and Gamble to associate to associate. 
including the allegation that the president of the company had allowed his personal um, allegiance, allegiance um, to Satan on a nationally television TV talk show. Should I continue? Mm -hmm. Yep. No, that, that's good. Uh, allegiance. That's allegiance. allegiance. Personal allegiance. Yep. So that's if that's if somebody believes in Satan. Pretty uh, pretty crazy stuff to be talking about people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Rati, go ahead, Rati. Can you read this? The text of the voicemail. Yes. But sometimes it's getting good. The text of the voicemail recording appears in lifted practic practically verbatim from a film that has been circling the globe for many years via text, email, and more recently email. Recently email. The rumors upon which it, which it is best have existed for close to three decades and are still running rampant discreet Procter and Gamble's best efforts to combat them as evidenced by a forwarded email that showed up. Mm -hmm. That showed up in my inbox just last last week. Okay, good, good, good. So, um, so Zach, can you uh, can you continue on here? Can you read this craziness? Please make a difference. Okay, uh, I start by please make a difference. Oh, my screen is fading. Here, let me okay, share this. Please make a. Uh, different. The president of Proto, uh, of Procter and Gamble. Oh, my screen is not. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. it's okay. okay. I just shared the link with you if you want to click open the link. It's okay. Okay, better. Yes, I will see the link. Okay, it's coming. Okay, yes, the president of Procter. And Gamble appears on the Phil Donhoe show on March 1, 1994. He announced that due to the openness of our society, he was coming out of the closet about his association with the Church of Saturn. He stated that a large portion of his of his profits from Procter and Gamble produced product goes goes to support this sta uh, satanic church when asked by Dan Dana Hall if stating this on TV will hurt his business he replied there are, are not enough Christian in the United States to make a difference okay you can, you can stop there okay let's see yeah, go ahead. Keep uh, keep reading here. If you are not sure about so after the product listing, if you're not sure about the product, look for a Procter and Gamble. Okay, I keep reading. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, if you are not sure about the product, look for a, for a Procter and Gamble writing on the pro product or the symbol of ram's horn. Which will appear on each product beginning on April. The the ram's horn will form the six hundred sixty six, which is known as Saturn's number. Christian will remember that if they they purchase any of the products, they will be contributing to the Church of Saturn. Inform others other Christian about this and and stop buying Procter and Gamble products. Let's show Procter and Gamble that there are enough Christians to make a difference. On a previous on a previous Merv Griffin show, the owner of Procter Dr. and Gamble, Gamble said mm -hmm. that if Saturn will prosper, okay, if Saturn will uh, prosper, he will give his heart and soil to him. Then he gave certain credit for his rich, riches. riches. Yeah, crazy, huh? So yeah, so Amway. 
No, yeah. that's okay. That's, that's enough. So Amway is a competitor, okay? So what Amway, what Amway does is they have multi-level marketing, all right? So they do multi-level marketing. They're a global corporation that does multi-level marketing, um, and they have products that compete against them. Okay, so so who knows? I don't know. I don't, I don't know if, um, you know, I don't know if Procter & Gamble. So, uh, uh, I think that that's, uh, they admitted that they are linked to sat satanic church? Sat I don't satanic know. Satanic idea? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Who knows? So, so, yeah, I'm not sure. So, who knows? You know, kind of crazy stuff. But. So, you're going to buy Satan soap. So, anyway. Yes. Yeah, so uh, please please don't support him. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that is, uh, you're right, Marzi. That's a strange level for marketing stuff. All right, well, hey, I'm going to go just a little early. I'm going to be in the next class, okay? It's another advanced class. Um, I know some of the. Uh, some of the um, class here with microphones and stuff were a little messed up, but that's okay. I think we got through. So, Zach, good to have you in class. Uh, Rati, nice to meet you. Marcy, always a pleasure. Lamia, always thank a you. pleasure. Igor, thank you very much, and thank you for the, uh, the information about the pockets and so forth. Fendi, take care. And Cecilia, I will much. see you. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you bye -bye. very much. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, I'm going to go to the class. I'm going to go to the class. I'm going to go to the class.